Although a complete fire protection system includes detectors, alarms, and suppression or extinguishing systems, not all of these will be required in all buildings or spaces. The Building Codes and the Life Safety Code, LSC, determine the level of fire protection required according to the type of occupancy, the use of the space, and the size and height of the building. In some cases, such as a mixed occupancy, a detection and fire alarm system may be required in only one area of the building. The codes also specifically address requirements for the use of fire dampers and other devices that are used in conjunction with fire protection systems. When certain systems are used, the codes often allow for greater flexibility in other areas of the codes, such as construction types, rating of interior walls, and overall area and building heights. Many jurisdictions also require the use of a fire code, which provides additional requirements. Some of the information overlaps between the building codes and the fire codes. Other chapters in the fire codes are unique and indicate when specific active fire protection systems are required beyond their requirement in the building codes the proper installation of automatic sprinkler systems, and additional requirements including maintenance for the use of active systems. The fire codes typically include prescriptive requirements as well as performance criteria for the development of active protection systems. When specific testing and installation methods are required, the building codes, the fire codes, and the LSC refer to a number of the standards published by the National Fire Protection Association, NFPA. The NFPA standards specify locations, design details, and installation requirements, as well as testing standards that must be followed. Some of the standards deal with fire prevention. Others concentrate on detection and suppression systems. The standards most often used for interior projects are listed in the chart shown here. Although these codes and standards are most often used by a mechanical or electrical engineer, understanding the scope of these codes is important in the development of the design. They will be included in the discussion of each type of system. In the past, almost all fire protection systems were designed based on the prescriptive code requirements. These technical requirements were based on criteria established by the industry, often as a result of a devastating fire, and were determined by typical engineering calculations. Now, performance design is an increasingly acceptable way to design a fire protection system that can address the special needs of a design or building. It is most often used with multi-level atriums and one-of-a-kind facilities. It can also be helpful for buildings that do not meet the current codes, such as an historic building with an open stairwell or a space with an unusual design, such as a unique ceiling pattern. In other cases, special needs of the occupants or unique kinds of fire hazards may need to be considered. With performance design, the design team defines the level of safety that must be provided. This can include how quickly a fire needs to be detected, how soon the suppression system activates, who will be notified of the fire, the safest egress patterns, and other criteria. The unique characteristics of the space or building are also considered. Then, specific engineering calculations and computer fire modeling are used to analyze and create a system that responds best for that design. For example, one model determines the burn rate and heat release rate of various construction materials in order to calculate potential fire sizes. Computer models can also calculate how fast a fire is likely to burn and the amount of smoke and carbon monoxide it may produce. In most cases, the design will use the performance criteria for selected parts of the building, but the rest of the fire protection system will be specified according to the prescriptive code requirements. Fire detection and suppression systems are not typically part of sustainability codes and standards. However, there are some things to consider. 
These are discussed in the section Sustainability Consideration later in this course. Accessibility standards such as the Americans with Disabilities Act ADA, and the ICC ANSI A117.1 do not play heavily in the development of fire protection systems. The main accessibility requirement for fire prevention has to do with fire alarms and accessible warning systems. Also keep in mind that any device that is part of the fire protection system and meant for occupant use must be placed at accessible reaching heights and locations and cannot be located so that it becomes a projection into the accessible path. Signage as well as the type and location of the operational mechanisms is also important.